What's up everybody? Brian here, Carolina Bushwhacker. All right, well, let me give you an overview of the shop and where it's at right now. All right, just starting at the door coming in. I've added in this here really nice workbench, put tools and stuff in and kind of organized a little bit. And as you come around, there's a couple of displays. Yep, and I'm gonna explain all this to you in just a minute. And then of course there's my benches. Some of you've already seen inside of my shop. And then a few more displays over here. And then over here's a little bit of more shelf storage. And then back to the door. All right, well, I'm gonna explain all this to you. All right, so you can see I got a lot of forms up here. And as you can tell, there's a brand new one. And these are off colored. And I'm gonna explain that to you. And here's even more down here. So, another taxidermist, or former keyword, taxidermist, bought all this, wanted to be a taxidermist, second year, he was done, cashed in his chips, the stuff sat around for a few years, and I bought him out. Very common with people getting into taxidermy minus that coyote form and this form up here. But I bought all these other forms, got a really good deal. I can reuse them for some reason. He bought them all upright or semi-upright and straight, a few of them were turned to the right. He had no lefts, so what did I do? I came straight home and started experimenting, turning one of them left, one of the straight forms. How to alter it and turn it left. Uh, just playing around with the clay and everything. All right, well, I'm gonna explain some of this to y'all. Oh yeah, also came with two double stands. Man, those are gonna ramp up production this year. All right, well, let me get to talking to y'all about this. All right, guys, let's talk about wanting to be a taxidermist. I've got a handful of friends that are telling me now they want to learn the art of taxidermy to possibly become taxidermists. I have people from the YouTube channel that I talk with that are wanting to be taxidermists, and that's great, that's wonderful. This really is kind of a dying skill, and it needs to be kept alive. All right, now I'm gonna to explain to you my story from where I used to be to where I am now and that road that I've been taking to get to where I am now. All right, let's start with this right here. So the story starts here. When I was a kid back in the early 80s in elementary school, I went to the library and I found this book about taxidermy and it showed in there this guy was mounting a bass, largemouth bass, and it had little illustration pictures and I think it was even black and white and I'm looking at it and was just fascinated and falling in love with it, but it looked very hard and very complicated. I shut the book, I put it away. It stuck with me for years and years and years. Then by the time I was getting into my 20s, actually into my later 20s, I was like, you know what? One day I'm gonna become a taxidermist. When I get a little bit older, I'm gonna get out of the construction industry and I'm gonna become a taxidermist full time which is where I am right now. Now, I'm gonna to explain to you some things that I've had to do over the last 15 years to get to where I am now. Okay, so 15 years ago, I was trapping, and I was taking raccoons and fox and a couple of other pelts, and I started learning how to flesh them out, salt them down, and tan them. I figured I need to learn how to tan before I can do anything else. Well, back then, all you really had was VHS cassettes, then DVDs, YouTube came a few years later. The problem with the cassettes and the DVDs, they do not show you completely 100% in detail up close entirely how to do it from start to finish. You're left with gaps and questions and blanks that you need answered. You cannot ask a DVD, you cannot ask a VHS and get an answer back. Then you're left kind of puzzled. Maybe you even want to throw the towel in and say, hey, maybe this isn't for me. Then YouTube came around. 
YouTube brought better quality videos, but then you still get left with some of those questions. Now, some people off of YouTube, like myself, will correspond back with you and try to help you out. But here's a suggestion that I give to everybody that's really, truly wanting to become a taxidermist. Go to school. Go to school and learn how to do taxidermy professionally from an accredited school for taxidermy. You can find another taxidermist to be a mentor, to teach you, but you gotta keep this in mind too. A lot of them are trying to make money running a business and slowing them down, sometimes you may not get the exact full learning curve that you need to get or you're gonna get it over a long term versus going to school and learning a little quicker. Now, to go to school, let me tell you this, you need to come up with a financial plan for some people like myself on affording to go to school and take care of everything along the way. Okay, most of us live from paycheck to paycheck. Then you start doing the research and you find out about some of these taxidermy schools and they're weeks long and it's $10,000 and you're like, wow, I don't know if that's going to happen for me. Trust me, been there, done that. And it was like 10 years back, I was like, man, I'm going to go to taxidermy school. So I started pulling up different taxidermy schools and seeing their programs and how much it costs and all that. Kind of shattered my dreams a little bit because I was like, wow, man, that, that's a lot of money in a long time. Well, I didn't want to leave the wife at home to have to take care of all the bills by herself while I'm gone, the finance of paying to go to school, the money you're going to need to live off of. Then when you get back from school, you're going to need money to spend on shop, tools, equipment, and all kinds of overhead. I'm going to explain all that to you as well. All right, so now that you're getting an idea to how much it's gonna cost and how long it's gonna to take to go to taxidermy school, start coming up with a financial savings plan. And it may take you a few years, that's what it did for me. So start putting away money every week, figure out which taxidermy school you wanna to go to, how much is it gonna to cost, to when you can go, how long it's gonna take you to be gone, to which courses you're gonna take and learn and come up with a financial savings plan to do it. Okay, now, now that you're thinking about it and you're coming up with a financial savings plan to go to school, you've got one picked out, this, that, and the other. Don't know how far down the list it is before you can go. It may be six months before they have an opening. They may have an opening next month. I don't know. Each school operates a little differently. You're going to need somewhere to operate out of. Me, I have a couple of buildings, and in my house, I have a studio. Now, of course, the studio came with the house. I built the shops separately over the last few years. They're paid for. I took and built them out of my pocket, planning all this out for the last quite a few years. You're gonna to need tools and equipment. Buy a little here, buy a little there, add in a piece here, add in a piece there. And I'm gonna to explain to you why you're gonna to wanna to do all that the way I'm suggesting to do it. Now, you're taking and you're starting to build up. You're starting to build up. You're building up all your tools, you're building up your equipment, you got a shop or whatever maybe you've built or you already had something you can convert into a shop. Okay, so you're getting things built up, now you're getting ready to go to school, everything's coming together, you're pumped, you're excited. Let me explain a little more to you. Okay, so now you got your shop, you got some tools, you've been experimenting around on a few of your own specimens. Do not take other people's stuff and start experimenting around on it until you've went to school and learned professionally. Only mess around with your own specimens unless somebody 100% fully agrees, hey man, I know that you're trying to learn and here you go. And I suggest even when you get back from school, still continue to learn on your own specimens first. Okay, 
So now you're back, you, you know, went to school, you're ready to start making money, you're ready to be a taxidermist full time, and then you come across the stumbling block of getting enough business. This happens very often to a lot of people. When they get home from school, they're trying to recruit business, they're trying to think of where to get business from, advertisement, this, that, the other. And then you find that a lot of people are like, well, man, you haven't been doing taxidermy that long. This guy's been doing it for 25 years. I'm gonna have him do it. And you end up in a struggle. And then that's when this happens. All right, well, that's what happened with this guy. His father was a deer processor. He said, you know what, I'm going to do taxidermy because we have so many deer coming in here and people need their deer done that I'm going to become a taxidermist and the business will go hand in hand. So he started doing taxidermy and he ordered all this stuff. And in the first year, he did six shoulder mounts. Year number two turned tenfold. He got 60 shoulder mounts to do and then reality set in to how much it really takes to be a taxidermist so these 60 deer were taking him so long to get done and people wanted their deer back i don't know what kind of time frame he told them that it took him so long to do these 60 deer that his father told him, said, son, you better off to go down there to the convenience store and get you a job getting paid by the hour because of how long it's taking you to do these here deer mounts to versus how much you're actually making a profit of. So he decided, boom, when these 60 deer are done, I'm done. And that's exactly what happened. So this stuff sat around this guy's side shop for a few years and then he finally reached out to me and said, hey man, I got a whole bunch of stuff that I'd like to sell. Would you be interested in buying it? I said, I'll come take a look at it. So I get down there and then he tells me, hey man, by the way, it's a few years old. I thought he just got out of the taxidermy business from last year, but it had been a few years. I said, yeah, I'll still take a look at it. And I look at it. He gave me a price that was very, very fair. I couldn't believe the price that he gave me and everything that come with it. So of course, yeah, I'm going to jump all over it. It helped to uh, make me a little better profit this year. Now, I'm going to explain this part to you where this guy fits in with what my mentor had just told me a couple of months ago. So I have a taxidermy mentor. Even if you go to school, when you get back, find you a taxidermy association in your state, find you a mentor. It's really good to have a mentor and find you a mentor that has a mentor that has a mentor that has a mentor. So if you have a question and he can't answer it, then the next one, the next one, until one of them have experience and knowledge to what your question is to give you a proper answer. So my mentor told me a couple of months ago, he goes, I hope you make it in this business. Now he's been in it for over 25 years. Anything he tells me, and he's a really great guy, I listen to it. He said, 90% of the people, 90, nine zero percentage of the people that get into taxidermy, get out of it and sell it or go to work for somebody else. Wow. I said, man, oh man. I got to be in that 10%. This is what I want to do until they put me in the ground. So put that into your thought box right there. 90% get into it and don't make it or just throw the towel in. When I was in school, my teacher would tell me stories about other people that came to school. And he told me a story about one guy and there's a couple of them that are like this where they took and they spent like $30,000 on getting a slab of concrete poured, a 40 by 40 stainless steel building put up, all the electrical and plumbing, all the stainless steel countertops and all kind of cabinets. They order all the fleshing machines and, and bird fleshers and, and tumblers and everything tool and everything you need to be a taxidermist. Then they go to school, next thing you know, they're $50,000 
into something they haven't made a dollar back on. Then a year goes by, then year number two goes by, and then they realize how much time it takes, how much goes into it, how much is coming back to you, and they're like, oh my God, it's gonna take me forever to make my money back and start turning a profit. Then they do like this guy did. They go ahead and say, you know what? I got to go back to doing something else, this, that, and the other. They throw the towel in. They sell everything for half the price they paid for it or less and just eat their losses. And then somebody like me comes along and buys it from them. You know, it, it's just, it can be a very, very hard, tough business if you don't go about it the right way. That's why I did it the way that I did. Just started building up and paying for everything years in advance. So now I'm not stressing over all the debt that I'm into to try to make credit card payments or pay back a bank, you know, or, or somebody personally lent money or whatever. This is the reality of wanting to be a taxidermist. All right, well, I'm not gonna keep rambling on and rambling on and rambling on, but I figured I really need to make this video to reach out to a few people to tell them the real side of taxidermy. If you're really wanting to be a taxidermist, put a lot of thought into what I said. If you got any questions, reach out to me. I will do the best I can to correspond back with you and tell you the answers to the best of my knowledge. Do me a favor, guys. Hit the like button if you're liking this video. That really helps me out. The more likes I get, the more I'm kind of into the algorithm and not pushed away and forgot about. So I can reach out to other people just like you. All right, guys, like always, thanks for watching.